And that's where I stumbled upon something that I think is really, really amazing. And it's actually like helped me a ton, which is intermittent fasting for technology. Here at HG, we help people develop healthy relationships with technology. And this is becoming increasingly important because as we're sort of getting more and more research on stuff, we're discovering that there are negative impacts to social media and the more time we spend playing video games, like the more it sort of impacts our motivation. We're also sort of seeing some problems develop with things like streaming and parasocial relationships, stuff like pornography addiction. And so while technology has a lot of really great uses in our life, it also causes us a lot of problems. Hey there, thanks for watching, and I'm glad these videos have been helpful. A lot of times I'll read the comments and see people asking, well, what do I actually do about it? Which is such a great question. And unfortunately, my experience has been that the resources out there aren't actually that good at helping people create sustainable change, which is why I started HG in the first place. HG coaches are trained on a curriculum that integrates all of my understanding into what is motivation, what paralyzes us, and how to create lasting behavioral change. So if you're ready to take the next step, HE coaches are ready to build the life that you want. They've helped people build careers, find relationships, build networks of friends, discover what their passions are, and pursue their hobbies. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, check out the link in the description below. And so some people will come up with things, and we do this in our community as well, where we've got like a particular coach, for example, who runs these like dopamine detox sessions. We have all kinds of like limitation attempts at technology. But the challenge is that it's really hard, right? Let's say I do a dopamine fast for two weeks and then like I come back to it and then it's sort of like, okay, well, how do I reintegrate technology? We'll see this also with stuff like things like pornography addiction or video game addiction, more so with video game addiction. But like, how do we sort of reintegrate this technology if we take an extended break from it, right? So people will take these breaks, but then the questions that I always get is like, okay, what's the right amount of technology to use? Because it's really hard, because even if you work really hard and you sort of take a big break from technology, you've got to come back at some point, right? Because technology is a part of every part of our life. It's part of work. It's part of, it's how we have fun. It's how we socialize so we don't spend time on screens, but I'm still needing to like text people to make plans and stuff like that. So it's in every corner of our life and it becomes really hard to not let it bleed in. And that's, there's a very good reason why it's hard to let it not bleed in. It's because the developers of things like apps and various technology platforms want to bleed into our life, right? That's the way they design stuff. So they design stuff with different kinds of colors. And if you take a look at any icon on your phone, I can guarantee you that that icon has been extensively tested. Even things like the pitch and tone and frequency and volume of notifications on your phone are designed to kind of pull you in. And that's the huge problem with tech is that I have a lot of good, legitimate reasons to use it, right? Like I've got to check my email for work. I've got to get back to this person so we can meet up for dinner or whatever. Um, I need to coordinate with my personal trainer so I can get physically in shape. I need to look up a recipe so that I can make myself a healthy dinner. There's all these like healthy uses of tech. The problem arises that the second we start using the device, there's all this stuff out there that is pulling us in a different direction. Because once I look at one recipe, like, you know, whatever platform I'm using to look up the recipe doesn't want me to go. Because the longer I stay on the platform, the more money the platform maker makes. So they design lots of things. They show you other things. And those thumbnails are actually very carefully chosen. The titles are carefully chosen. And we click on the next thing and we click on the next thing and we click on the next thing. So in the past, when people develop solutions for technology, there's one core problem. And that core problem is, okay, how do I reintegrate it, right? If I take a vacation for two weeks or do a dopamine detox or dopamine fast and I'm going to go be like doing all this different stuff, how do I reintegrate it? And that's where I stumbled upon something that I think is really, really amazing. And it's actually like helped me a ton, which is intermittent fasting for technology. So I was trying intermittent fasting in my own life because I'm trying to, you know, experiment with different diets and try to understand, okay, like what's healthy, what's not healthy. And so I, I tried intermittent fasting and I thought it was like really, really interesting. So I, I liked it a lot for a lot of reasons. And then I kept on getting these questions from our community. It's like, okay, I've done a dopamine detox for two weeks. Like now what do I do? How do I develop healthy technology habits? I'll get this question from parents as well. Like how much screen time is too much screen time and like all this kind of stuff. 
And then I thought to myself, well, what if we just took all the principles of intermittent fasting and applied them to tech? What if we restricted our technology use to eight hours a day? Because I think that solves automatically a lot of problems. So I decided to actually try it. So for about a two, now it's been almost three week period, I implemented intermittent fast fasting for technology. And what does that mean? That means that I restrict all of my technology use to eight hours a day. And you may say to yourself, but hold on, hold on a second. Like, how is that possible? Like, how are you going to have fun, right? Because like, if I say something like that, what's your initial reaction? I can't restrict technology usage to eight hours a day. So you really can't do that, right? Because I have to work for eight hours and work requires technology, right? And if I have to work for technology, that means that my entertainment will become Amish. Like I can't do anything fun using a screen. You mean I can't watch movies? I can't watch TV? I can't play video games? I can't do any of that stuff? What if I need to look up a recipe? Then what? So it sounds impossible, but this is where actually it's like really, really fantastic and it is way more manageable than you could possibly imagine. So let's try to understand a little bit how this works. So as I started to implement a technology restriction to eight hours a day, I noticed it solved a lot of the problems that I try to help people with. So with like a dopamine detox, okay, how do I reintegrate it? It's kind of fixed because you can only use it for eight hours a day. You don't have to worry about it invading every corner of your life. In terms of stuff like video games, like how much is too much? Well, that depends. Like if you've got time for it and you finish everything that you need to do, then you can play video games. And by the way, I've been gaming a fair amount during this time. It's like actually not that big of a deal. It's bizarre. And then there's also another huge thing that I kind of discovered, which is that everyone is like out of time nowadays, right? Like everyone's like, oh my God, like I go to work, I commute, like I cook, I exercise, and that's all the time I have in the day. Like I don't have time for anything, right? It's just like work, eat, sleep, uh, rinse and repeat cycle, which makes sense, right? That's the experience that a lot of people have. And then it's like, oh my God, like what's the problem? It's like, it's capitalism, right? And like people are working me harder and I work so much and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that people don't do that right? So that's definitely the case. But I think there are some things that we've missed. So let's start by understanding how many hours we actually have in a week. There's about 168 hours in a week. Let's assume that we sleep for eight hours a day. So that drops us down by 56 hours a week down to 112. Let's assume that we work for about 40 hours a week. That drops us down to about 72. And then let's also assume that there's 10 hours of other miscellaneous work a week. I was actually checking myself and I tend to work a little bit more than 40 hours. Um, also you got to like go grocery shopping and stuff like that. So let's give that another 10 hours a week. Okay. So now we're left with 62 hours after we include work and sleeping. So the first thing that I want y'all to notice is like, we still have a lot of time left in the week, but let's add a couple of other things. So let's assume that we spend about one hour a day, like cooking and cleaning, right? So that moves us down from 62 to about 55. Let's say I spend about half an hour getting ready every morning with like showering, shaving and all that kind of stuff. So that's an additional 3.5 hours. So we're down to about 52 hours a week. And let's say that we want to exercise an hour a day, right? Which who exercises an hour a day? So even if we're left at like 52 hours, if we're going to exercise for an hour a day, we're down to like 45 hours, which is a lot. It doesn't sound like once we include cooking, cleaning, work, overflow work, com like maybe if you want to add commute, you can add that, let's say half an hour each way, which is seven hours a week, right? So one hour a day. So now we're like maybe in the thirties. It doesn't feel like we have 35 to 40 free hours a week. And you are correct. You don't have 45, 40 to 45 hours a week. Where does that time go? Well, it turns out that the average human being spends about four hours a day on their cell phone, right? And it's not necessarily productive work. So that's like 28 hours right there. And that doesn't even include the seven hours a day that we normally spend on screens on average. Okay. And if you're watching this, your usage may even be a little bit higher because you're a member of this community and you're watching this on a platform right now. So once we include seven hours a week of screen time, like, okay, now we're talking about 49 additional hours. That's total screen time or computer usage, actually. Now we can sort of see what, what's happening, right? Because we don't have 50 extra hours a week. Well, so this is what's really cool is when I started doing intermittent fasting for technology, I actually gained about 40 hours a week. It's like absolutely wild because where does that time go? Like, think about it, right? If you work 40 or 50 hours a week, you sleep 56 hours a week, you cook, you clean, you exercise a little bit, like you're not left with 40 hours a week. Where does it go? It goes into technology. That's why everyone is like, I don't have any time anymore. Well, how many hours a day do you spend on cell phones and screens? 
And what are you even dur doing during that time? So here's what I noticed once I actually started restricting to eight hours a day. The first thing that I noticed is that in the mornings, I waste a lot of time on technology. And I'll sort of justify it to myself thinking about work. So I'll, I'll like, like I'll, you know, I'll start early in the morning. Like sometimes I'll wake up and do yoga and stuff. But on a bad day, I'll pull out my phone. And the first thing that I do is I check my calendar. And I see like, okay, what do I need to do today? Like what time do I need to get up? How many hours do I have to be a degenerate before work starts? And you may do the same thing. And then what happens, you start thinking about the stuff that you have to do, but you don't actually do it, right? So I spend time like checking my calendar, checking my email, and mentally making a list of tasks that I need to do that day. Then depending on how many hours I have to be a degenerate, I may like browse Reddit. And if I'm browsing Reddit for like half an hour, 45 minutes, every trip to the bathroom I'm taking my cell phone means that taking a piss instead of taking 30 seconds takes 10 minutes. Right. And then like when I read, uh, when I'm looking stuff on Reddit, like, oh, I'm going to keep up with some drama. I'm going to maybe like look at a scientific study here or there, or, like, you know, but most of the time I'm going to be looking at how the world is all going to hell and no one can meet anyone and everyone's lonely and there's suicide and there's war and there's inflation. And so now I've lost an hour of my day, maybe even 75 minutes. And what have I accomplished? All I've done is stress myself out for the day. I've got a bunch of crap, but did I actually do it? No, I just like looked at what I have to do. It's like when I'm staring at like a, a book and just not reading it, right? It's a complete waste of time. So the other challenge that I had is, oh my God, like what if I need to get all this stuff done? I, eight hours is not enough work, is not enough time to get all my work done. So I started freaking out. So then I did something really cool. So I held that boundary and then I started realizing, oh, I can work a lot without technology. So then what I started doing is like sitting down with a piece of paper. And I would like write out like everything I need to do today. I'd make shopping lists. I'd like, you know, figure out, okay, what are the tasks that I need to do? I'd think about what my priorities are at work before being prompted by something like calendar or email. So paradoxically, what started happening is I started focusing on like bigger picture stuff and more important stuff. All the crap that I should be doing that I don't have time to do because I'm getting bogged down in meetings. I'm actually starting the day thinking about that stuff. So this is what my day used to look like. I'd come into this office, I'd sit down at this computer, and I'd basically try to figure out like, okay, what am I gonna do today? And now what my day looks like now, this is not something that I really expected, is this, okay? So I use so much more paper than I did before. And what I basically will do is like sit down and I'll try to like kind of map out what my day actually looks like. I'll take a ton of notes of all different kinds. Here's actually, here's the pile of papers just from the last 24 hours. Um, and what I've really found is that it focuses me so much more. And that's when it kind of hit me that like, you know, usually we sit down to use a device and we don't really know why we're using it. And the more that devices can do multiple things, the easier it is to not know why you're using it when you sit down. So when I sit down now at my computer, it's like, what am I actually trying to do? Like, okay, well, I can do some work. I can play some games. I can check my email. I can pay some bills. There's like a thousand different things that I can do on my, on my computer or my phone, which means that when I sit down to use it, my mind is not focused. And if my mind is not focused, that means that it's way easier to get distracted, right? And that's what all these apps and like YouTube suggestions and like Reddit posts, like that's what they're there for. They're there to distract the mind. And what I've discovered now is since I've started limiting my technology use and I actually like map out like what I need to do today before I actually even like get started, when I sit down to use a device, what I actually discover is I know exactly what I'm doing. So I sit down and I'm like, okay, I've got a limited number of times, so I got to do this, 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 and this. And then my mind is really focused and I find that I don't get distracted. And I actually find that like eight hours of technology use a day is actually way more than enough, which I never realized until I actually sat down and started doing this. Then I break my, my technology fast, right? So I tend to start, my window was 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? So I'm not touching anything on a screen until 10 a.m. So I'll like do yoga and other crap like that. And then I like break my fast. And then what I found is when I actually use the technology, I'm incredibly focused. So I have a shopping list. So if I would need to get stuff from Amazon or whatever, I just log on, I type in the things I have in the cart and I check out. And if you think about like, why is shopping hard? Why does shopping take any more than 60 or 90 or three minutes, five minutes? It's because we browse. 
And when we browse, we buy crap we don't need. And why do we buy it? Because we browse and we're looking for crap that we don't even need. And that's how the, the website is designed, right? And I'm not saying that Amazon is evil. It's just how the whole internet is designed. The whole internet is designed for you to come in for one purpose and then for you to hang out for three hours doing crap that you don't need to do. But if I only have eight hours of technology, I can't afford to spend half an hour wasting my time browsing crap that I don't need. The other thing that I found is that my work became incredibly focused. So I do a fair amount of writing. And what I would do is sit down and like write everything out. This is my pile of papers from stuff that I, I do. One thing I found is that I also print out a lot of stuff. So since I'm not allowed to use technology, I'll start work before 10, but I don't break my technology fast. So I'll like print things out. That's the one real downside. I guess it's bad for the environment. So I'll print stuff out and I'll like look over it. I'll collect all my thoughts. And then when I sit down to write, instead of writing for an hour and a half, that's a stream of consciousness that has to be edited later. I have all my thoughts collected. I write for like 20 minutes and I'm done. It's really bizarre. Even when it comes to like meetings and stuff like that, I'm really focused. I know what I need to do. I've thought about everything. I'm not getting distracted by stuff. I do absolutely check my email and then I add other things to the list that I need to take care of. But I want you all to think about this. I don't know if you all have ever had to work on the same day that you're catching a flight. And so this is the kind of thing where if you have to leave work by like 1 p.m. to catch your flight, what do you do when you get to work? You're incredibly focused, right? I got to do this, 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 and this because I got to be out the door at 1 p.m. I don't have any time to waste. And so you don't waste any time and you're out by 1 p.m. and the world doesn't fall apart. This is what every day has turned into. Like my work is incredibly focused. I shop quickly and I'm done. The really bizarre thing that I discovered is, remember, my window is 10 to 6, but I'll start work before, is I would sometimes finish work early. Like, I'd finish work around, like, 3.30 or 4, like, finish my last meeting, and then I'd play video games for, like, an hour or two until 6 p.m. And then once 6 p.m. rolls around, like, then it's like, okay, my technology window is closed, so that means I got to do something else, like, spend time with my kids, or go outside, or go for a walk, or read a book. And this is what's really wild is like, I don't know if you all realize this. You, you know how long it takes to read a book? The average book is 80,000 words. Okay. The average human reads at the pace of 300 words a minute, which means that the average person can finish a, the average book in six hours. And we have 40 hours a week of free time. And we've already accounted for cooking, cleaning, exercise, errands, and crap like that. So I read four books in two weeks because I didn't have anything else to do. And it was actually really great. I also started like gardening and other crap like that. Like I just started doing all the stuff that is on your to-do list that you don't have time to do. And why don't you have time to do it? It's because you spend four hours a day on your cell phone and seven hours a day on a screen. And only some of it is work. But the thing is, work doesn't have to fill out eight hours. This is the other wild thing. The average person spends eight hours at work, but they really only do between three and six hours of productive work a day. And you know this, right? Most of what you do at work is getting distracted and then eventually you'll do some work. So what would happen if we started making everything efficient? This is what intermittent fasting for technology has helped me do, make everything efficient. So let's talk a little bit about how to make this happen. What we're gonna do for IF for technology is actually pull from a lot of like intermittent fasting principles from like diet stuff, okay? So the first thing that's really important is you've gotta plan your day, just like you plan your meals in inter inter intermittent fasting. If you do not plan your meals in IF, you will fail. So you really have to think ahead of time about what you're going to eat when you break your fast and like what's going to happen. In the same way, you have to think ahead of time about how you are going to deploy the limited resource of technology. And this in and of itself cuts out so much of the waste, right? Because if I don't get this done, I can't do it. And if you violate that, then you're SOL. So let's start by just thinking through, okay, what do I need to do? So I, well, this is what I need to do for work. This is why I need to order stuff online. This is the stuff that like I need to check into. Here's the doctor's appointment that I need to uh, investigate, things like that. The second thing that we, we really need to be prepared for is when I was learning in, intermittent fasting, I learned something really interesting, which is that you're going to need to change your relationship with hunger. In the same way, if you're doing IF for technology, you need to change your relationship with boredom. So right now, the way that we exist is when we get bored, we have some dopaminergic crap that we reach for that doesn't really fulfill us and doesn't help us, doesn't, isn't actually making us fun. It just alleviates boredom for some amount of time. 
And it even can get to the point where we are so, it doesn't even do a good job of alleviating boredom. So we need a second device. I don't know if y'all like, if this applies to you, but where you're watching TV and scrolling on your phone at the same time. So if you're hitting that point, then that's a huge problem. So for these two weeks, prepare to be like a little bit bored. And the key thing to understand is that boredom ain't going to kill you. And it's like, okay to be bored. And just think a little bit about, okay, like, what's more important to me? Gaining 40 hours a week or being less bored? Like, that's literally what the trade-off is. Because what we're doing every time we satisfy our boredom is we're losing an hour of our life every week. Okay? So change your relationship with boredom. Understand that just like hunger, it's a sensation. It's a concern. It's a worry. And there's all kinds of stuff that you can do that may not quite fix it. This is where I found that originally for me, like going for walks was really, really important. So I'd go for a walk, I'd take papers, I'd take a book, and I'd sit down at a park bench and actually like do my work there or think or do some kind of recreation, okay? So we're about one week in into intermittent fasting for technology. And the experience has been really interesting. So the first thing that I kind of noticed is like how much time I waste on technology and being able to really like restrict technology usage to eight hours a day has completely changed the structure of my day to day. The first thing is like I'm working right now and this is where I spend, I try to spend at least one hour a day outdoors. And what I found is that actually instead of just like waking up in the morning and like sitting down at the computer and figuring out what I need to do for the day, which is usually what used to happen. I would sit down, like look at my calendar and like, you know, just try to figure out, check my email, check Slack, check Reddit. And like, I used to just spend an hour or two just like checking stuff without actually doing work. And what I found now is that what I'll usually do is since I don't want to break my fast, I'll come outside with a piece of like paper and a pen and I'll actually just think a little bit about, okay, what do I want to accomplish today? Like, what do I need to do? And so rather than having like the internet or technology prompt me about what's important, I start to spend time really like thinking about, okay, like this is what I need to accomplish today. So there are a couple of other caveats, which I had to sort of think about, which I didn't really think about ahead of time until I tried it. So you'll probably have to do this too. The first is when I refer to technology, what I usually mean is electronics. So in my case, like I had a couple of simple exceptions. So like I'm allowed to use a car and like a microwave and things like that. Like I'm allowed to like use things that are technological devices. Okay. I'm allowed to use a yo-yo if I really need to tech, even though it's like, you know, technically technology. The other thing is I let myself use a GPS and then I let myself use a phone to coordinate like social plans and stuff. So for example, if my kids are going to like, you know, their friend's house for dinner, like I'm allowed to text their parents to go pick them up. The key thing there is that once I start using my phone, I'm going to be really, really strict about, okay, like I'm only going to text them and I'm only going to take phone calls and stuff. The other thing which I unfortunately had to do is since I'm a practicing physician, stuff relating to patients were like was the exception here. So if I get like a call from a patient and the patient is like, hey, I've run out of this medication. Can you please call in, you know, some kind of refill or something like that? Or I need, uh, like I got a brain scan or I, I, what happened this week is someone called me because they needed me to like look at their EKG and things like that. This is more physical medicine stuff. But like that was kind of the big rule breaker that I sort of allowed for myself. So if a patient needs me to use technology after hours, like it's totally okay to use it. So you may figure out a couple of things that are like exceptions to your rule, which is totally fine. But I strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to try to restrict as many things as you can. And so let me give you all a couple of examples of things that I struggled with. So one question is, what about music and what about audiobooks? So usually I'm someone who really likes listening to audiobooks when I'm doing things like the dishes. And so oddly enough, what I sort of decided was that I was actually going to cut both of them. So no audiobooks except within the window and then like no music originally. I allowed myself to listen to music if I'm doing like stuff that is not otherwise technology related. So if I'm reading a book and I'm, you know, sitting with my kids and we're like playing, so like, you know, there's music on the background, that's totally fine. So you may discover that there are a couple of exceptions and you've got to kind of figure that out for yourself. So just to summarize, right now we all struggle with not having enough time. There's also this really simple question of how do I use technology in a healthy way? And so far, the approach that we've taken is to try to like cut it out entirely, right? But the moment that we start getting back into it, it's very hard to set limits on our technology. 
because we're using it for like a quote unquote good reason, right? So like maybe I'm, I need it for work, which is like kind of number one. Like I use it to communicate with family members. I use it to do research. That's another thing. I stopped doing like stupid ass random research that never turned into anything. Like if I sat down, I would do research, but then I would like turn it into something. That was a big thing that I kind of discovered is that like there's so much unproductive work that you do at work. And so if you have to restrict your technology usage, you're just going to like sit down and actually get it done. There are a couple of core problems that people are dealing with today. Number one, they don't know how to use their technology in a healthy way, right? We sort of will try to restrict it. We'll sometimes even go to drastic lengths, almost like a crash diet where I'm going to cut out all technology for two weeks. And we've advocated for this at times. We sort of have groups of people who do this on Discord. We have coaches who will help people with things like, you know, building healthy technology habits. And so that's all really great. The real challenge is that even if we try to set a healthy limit, something is going to get in the way. We need to work. And once we start working, this is where there's like billion dollar companies out there that are trying to steal your attention away from work. And then we end up slipping into technology. The second thing that we've observed across the whole is if you talk to people, no one has time, right? Everyone's running out of time. There's too much to do. I've got to work so much and I'm what? This is life. It's a get up, go to work, finish work, commute home, exercise, do laundry, eat and go to sleep after half an hour of recreation. That's what it feels like, right? But what I think a lot of people are missing is literally if you do an hour calculation in the day, we still have about 40 hours left in, the, in a week. Where does that time go? Well, it turns out there's statistics for that. Four hours a day of cell phone usage. Six hours and 45 minutes a, a day of other kinds of screen time. And so that's where our time is going. So there's a really simple solution, which is restrict all of your technology usage to eight hours a day. And you may start to rebel. Oh my God, but what about this? But what about this? But what about this? But what about this? And that's exactly what we want you to do. We want you to think about all of those problems and then solve them within the space that you have, right? Because our attention and technology usage is kind of like a gas. It fills up what, whatever container we give it. And the more that you start restricting it to eight hours a day, the more you'll figure out, okay, I can actually be incredibly efficient. Even though I'm breaking my fast at 10 a.m., I can start work two hours earlier. And if I start work two hours earlier, when I sit down at the computer, I bang stuff out way faster. And I still have time for recreation. By the way, I still get eight hours on the weekend. And what do you think I do on those eight hours on the weekend? I may not start in the morning. I may start at 2 p.m., right? Or even 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. And then I'm putting my kids to bed. They're in bed by, let's say, 9. And then, like, I have three hours to game. So you can absolutely do that. And it's kind of an intentional thing. But once those three hours are over, you're done. And so it's time to go to bed. So I strongly encourage you all to think about intermittent fasting for technology. I think it's a very, very elegant solution to a lot of the problems that we face. And you'll be amazed at like how much time you have once you start to implement it. All that crap that you wish you would do, like read a book, which by the way, takes five hours. Did you realize that? The average human being can read a book in five to six hours. We spend one book's worth of time on our cell phones every single day. So you'll find that you have a lot more time to do the things that are actually important to you. And that actually like leads to a way better life. So definitely give it a shot and feel free to add your experience in the comment section below.